Okay. So, Juwan, you can share your screen and let's just briefly run the DSA through uh, what we did. What Juwan wants to show is just a snapshot. I mean, we have plenty of videos, plenty of which we can put in the Google Drive and send you the link later to look into and all of that. Um, you can share your screen, Juwan. Okay. Please, just a minute. Yeah, you are, you started to talk, though, about how you started the NGO and Okay, uh, should I start from that place, sir? Yes, yes, go ahead. Oh, okay, okay. okay. We'll so, yeah. All right. So, um, as I was explaining, so when I now got to um, Aquarium of States, so that was when uh, the, I, the lights, the idea, I'm a very emotional person. So, and then, you know, when I'm going on the streets and I see beggars, people, I mean, the less privileged that doesn't have, there's this tear that always... In, run down my eyes, you know, that I feel like, yes, that um, I I need to, yes, that I need to do more, that I, I think my direction is where in helping people, I would just be shedding, I remember when I was traveling from Ekiti to Enugu, and then on the road, there was people begging, I was shedding tears, so, and then with that, I now feel like there is, and I read in your book that time, that, um, who you are, that if there's anything that is um, you know, maybe that is making you to be emotional. It could be a direction to what God wants you to do in terms of, you know, what your your passion is, what your heart's desires are now. So when I was there, that was when the light dawned on me. And then I begins to share it with my friend, uh, Charles. And then I shared with my brother too that, see, I feel like this is what uh, God wants me to do to start an NGO and to see how we can. So we started from there gradually. And I won't, I will not lie. Um, Dami has been a huge support. I can remember that time when we want to organize program, and then we were looking for speaker here and there, and he stays in. <laughs> in. <laughs> we looking for speaker, and then I'll just pick my phone because he's the only one I know that is very much accessible and available. I just I, we might be having the program tomorrow. Maybe some of our speakers are disappointed, there's nobody to show up, and I'll just call him. Uh, that please, we need you. We want you to come down from uh, Lagos for to Ikiti. So it would just show up and then take us, teach us and all like that. I've, at times, I can remember when he is going to have a meeting with all leaders of that NGO, how we can present ourselves, how we can structure the NGO and all like that. And so that's how we started. And from the end, here we are today, then Charles, and we met uh, Abose Day uh, through our School of Self-Discovery. We had a program 2015 uh, in um, Iwaro, Iwaroka. So that was where I met her. And, you know, she, after the program, she approached me and said she wanted to discuss one or two things with us. And from there, we begin to, I remember I dedicated a whole one month, you know, introduce, give her short shifts. Because something about me is that I'm always eager to tell people about you. They can testify to it. I'm all, at every given opportunity that I have, I'm always eager to introduce. So these are uh, pictures. Um, this is where we visit uh, an imp a physical impaired school in the Korea Koko in those states. So these are our team. We went there to give out um, writing materials, school materials. Uh, yes, so this is our team at that time. So um, you can, yes. Yeah. So another thing again is that we organized a free coding clubs. So uh, where we teach young, yes, we, where we teach young people in Mushin, Lagos, a local government here. So where we teach young people how they can, um, you know, web development, how they can create. Are you in Lagos now? Yes, I'm in Lagos. Yes. You want okay, let so me say something. Moved from Ondo State to Lagos, yes. Okay. Yes. So let mm -hmm. me say something to that. You know, um, like he has said, I mean, like these previous pictures, for this we have plenty, plenty pictures, and we cannot just even show even all the videos for this particular one. Then for the kids coding club, the kids coding club was our high idea together. Um, Steven, AY, and Juan, uh, surely because when I relocated to Lagos. When I came into Lagos, uh, DSA, should we give you a minute? No, no, everything is okay. I'm hearing you very well. Oh, okay. So when I moved into Lagos, my plan also, my vision was also to bring my two younger ones together with me. And uh, because they already had tech skill prior to that, I also knew that the only place where they could make use of their tech skill and profitable was in Lagos because Lagos uh, is the center of tech in Nigeria. So uh, when both of them came in to Lagos, it was easy for them to get a job. And uh, since 
they were already they already had that skill. So we thought three of us, and we got all of us as taught in this coding club at one point or the other. We thought, what can we do also outside what the NGO was doing in the Kitty State and in Ondo State? Uh, Lagos is a bigger place. What kind of impact can we have? In... So at this point, at this point, A AY was still with you also in Lagos. Yes, AY was the first one that joined me in Lagos because he finished school earlier than you want. He was the first. In fact, as a matter of fact, we were living together in my office space <laughs> at that time. This was 2018, 19, 2019, 18, 19. Uh, so when AY joined. Um, we already had the idea of the kids coding club after that time uh, to start and do something. But Juwan also came in, I think two years after when Juwan was done with NYC and all of that. So three of us at the point were in Lagos. Okay, so that was when we started the kids coding club. Um, this coding club was to, because I saw the impact of tech in the life of my younger ones. Okay, because I see a lot of um, young people that are in church. Uh, all they do in church ministry, in what they do with them in church is to do 24 hours tonguing, night vigil every day. Nobody's empowering them with skill. Nobody's talking about uh, what can they do with their hands to, to maximize their purpose, their calling, and all of that. So, and since tech transformed the life of my younger one, I thought about it that let's give back. Let's like, what we're already doing with the NGO, let's open another part of the NGO, which is the tech part, to train young people and equip them with uh, uh, tech skill. And that was what gave birth to the Kids Coding uh, Club, where we go into Mushi, Oshudi. These are all the deep the heart of Lagos, where all of these kids, they don't have the capacity to even pay for whatever it is that we're training them. And we decided to start teaching them coding, okay? Teaching them tech skills, how to build games and all of that. And particularly, Juwantu was dedicated to this because sometimes, my job didn't allow me. Juwan took everything on his head and he made this happen. AY too, at the same time, with Saturdays, that AY will be the one to go and train them. And this coding club is still ongoing. Okay. This is the picture. Um, you can see Juwan here. This is, this is Juwan at the right hand side top. He's the one wearing blue. Uh, we also had other worker, other people who joined the kids coding club to join us to train these kids. We actually also helped the parents secure. Um, affordable laptops for these kids, okay? Affordable laptops for these kids to be able to uh, learn how to code. Uh, and but how do, you, how do you find them? How do you gather them? Do you ask the gov government, local government, or how through, how do you get them? So what, what, I, what I did, what I did, because when I started doing well in Lagos, uh, I started, um, my business allowed me to meet quality people. Uh, build quality relationships. So this coding, coding club actually started um, when I started talking to schools. The first place we went to was to schools. So I went, we would pick a particular schools in a particular area, schools in particular area, and go and talk to their principal, talk to their proprietor and say, uh, we want to help kids in your school to learn tech skill. And of course, they already know that the most important skill to learn today, especially in the third world country, it's tech. Okay. And I give them a sample of my two younger ones that are doing tech and after they finished their NYC, they didn't have to wait to get a job because tech was hot and they were earning good money with tech skills. So uh, they gave their school to us. And then what we now do was to do a screening for the kids. And when the kids that pass the screening, maybe 30, 40 of them, we bring them to a class and then come to teach them every Saturday. I mean, this particular picture you're seeing, DSA, these schools, this particular school, none of the students had a laptop when we started. And when we met the parents and introduced this uh, kids coding club to them, they said there's no, no none of them had one. You mean none of one, them? None of them one. had a laptop when we started. And the school didn't provide. The school couldn't provide. <laughs> I mean, I think this is the story for another day. The school didn't even most of the school we visited didn't even have a, a computer center. They didn't even have anything like that. So, and the parents were complaining that they couldn't even provide laptop for their kids. But because of the training Juwan was giving them. And the children will go back and tell their parents how impactful it was, how loving it was, and all of that. The parents eventually, one by one, started going to borrow money to make sure that their kid had a laptop. At some point, out of about 40 to 50 students, we had almost about 80 to 90% of them having a laptop, like you can see in the pictures uh, here. Joel, go ahead. So um, then after that, we organized a campaign called Feed One, Feed All. So the idea behind this campaign is that 
um, irrespective of where you are, because immediately I left school, so we are it's we find it difficult for us to now have a, to be having a physical meeting because someone is in Abuja, I'm in Lagos, and that person is in I mean different locations. Location. Yes, we now came up with this idea that okay, um, we want to be having a campaign where anything just find someone and feed someone. That is feed one, feed all. So just find a, a group of people within your capacity. If you can buy food stuff for them, buy um, snacks, and just make sure that you can uh, you feed them. So that's what we are currently doing in this particular picture there. So this is Charles, and this is uh, Charles, is Charles also in Lagos then? No, no, no. Charles is in Akure. You know, so he, he's, feed, he's feeding people in Akure. Yes, 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 exactly. yes. That, that's his picture there. So and then this is both in the middle, right? Yes. yes. This is yes. The day in, um, I think this picture was you took this picture in Akure, right? Too. As a okay, bad bad yes. yes. So she was at the bottom. And this other lady here, she's not here. Afola Shadi is still part of the team. So uh this is uh, in uh, nine, uh, I think, uh, nine uh, just, uh, nine just nine just nine just so yeah. this yes, this event, because uh by the time everyone, the initial leaders of the of the NGO graduated from school, we were not scattered in everywhere. So uh, to keep the NGO going and keep the impact, what we did was that uh, we were mobilizing other new leaders from different schools. But at the same time, all the leaders that we gathered that were scattered in different locations, we started doing uh, a, a campaign to make sure that all the leaders are involved in different locations. So this particular feeding campaign was done across all the different locations where we had the leaders of the NGO for that particular campaign. Do how long did this campaign run? Yeah, we we did it for like um, uh, is it is it two or three days? Uh, I think two or three days. We did that this campaign for. So yeah, you can just proceed. So then um, we organized a when I was in school. This, this was when I was in Akuba <laughs> at the Kilajash University. <laughs> so. <laughs> So uh, we, we organized a campaign called Campaign Against Primarital Sex. So there are two things we are trying to solve with this campaign, right? So number one is that we are trying to provide... Uh, what do you mean? Ma campaign Against Marital Sex? Primarital. Against Primarital. Primarital Sex, okay. Yes, yes. Because uh, in this particular, in Akoko, what that is rampant there is unwanted pregnancy. Uh, you know, it is... Uh, do you want, do you want yes. remember you shared this with me? You know, this is very key, uh, DSA. In this particular location, Akoko in Ondo states, like Jawan said, I wanted to emphasize on that is that there were too much primary taxes, early pregnancy, teenagers, just a lot of girls getting pregnant. And you know, I remember when he shared this idea with me, and I said, Jawan, if we don't do anything about this, no church would redeem is in that environment. We're not in that environment. They are the biggest church there, and they're practically not doing anything about this. If we don't do anything about this, then nobody's going to do anything about this. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. so thank you. So that was, um, this is, was one screen, um, it's called a TO, I mean, no, I think it's a year. Akumba Community High School. Yes, yes. So this, this is a year. No, 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 this is a year. Yes, a year. So we just go into this, all those remote areas in Akoko, and then we do meet, meet your mentor for them to, in terms of their career, you know, what they can do, uh, some of them are in art class, commercial class. Some of them even want to become a doctor. They don't even know the class they can, the, the kind of career that is meant for them to, to choose in you becoming a medical doctor. So those kind of enlightenment that uh, we, we brought to them here. You can go ahead. Yes. So uh, what this campaign was trying to accomplish, what we are going to be this campaign was to educate and orientate these students on the dangers of premarital sex how to prevent it, how to be strong. And uh, DSA, like, you know, we were not just doing this uh, as just anybody who would do NGO, because that was one thing that struck me, uh, strike us also about uh, your impact in Ukraine. I mean, there are a lot of organizations, I mean, UNICEF is an NGO, UNN, I mean, United Nations, but these people, we, they just try to help humanity, which is also very good. But we took the pattern you took, which is to use the love of Christ, the love of humanity, to impact these people. So it wasn't just, it, we, we, we will pray with them, even in these meetings, we pray with them, we encourage them, share Bible principles on how to withstand um, um, against pressure, peer pressure, and all of that. So this was uniquely we uh, impacting them with the impact that we've gotten from a lot of your teachings and all of that. 
and 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 the result was amazing. So it was amazing. Uh, so yeah, this is some of the pictures. Uh, <laughs> this was the campaign. So this this was me. I think this picture when I was in three hundred level in Adequate Adjust in you know those states. That was when I we went for this program in Obakoko. So we did this um uh, campaign then too. So, so you were still when you are doing this. Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. Wow. Yes. yes, and because of this uh, NGO, because our resources was not that much, that was when we ventured into business. So that's the money we are, uh, Charles and I were running a business when I was in school day. So we separated, I think maybe 40% of our of our gain, right? We separate apart for the NGO majorly because we know we need fund uh, to travel, to move around, to get materials and all like that. So that was what, that was the major reason why we started that business. Uh, Look, I'm totally surprised. You are doing it just like our people do in Ukraine. Yeah, it was self funded. Uh, yeah, that's what we're saying. DSA, yeah, we yeah. took your prototype yes. and we implemented till today. We've not gotten external money for even the kids coding club we do is self funded. Yeah. It's funded by me, by us. I mean, do you want to, everyone of what we have contributed, they were all self funded. Even currently, we, we bought laptops, about five to 10 laptops for the kids. And they all, even the price that we gave the for the kids coding club, when we do, when they finish a term, and then we are giving an assignment and students win, the price we give to them, cash price, $40,000, $20,000, $100. We take it from our own pockets and give to them. So it's actually your prototype that we decided to use. No, uh, but tell people in Nigeria that our members, each one of them, are responsible for their ministries, and they work to make money so that they will swap out their own ministries. People said, no, it's never in Nigeria. Nobody will ever <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's not possible because of what they are teaching the people. Okay, we listen to you, not just listen. We we caught the revelation of your teachings of your ministry. That's why we were able to duplicate this. Let me look for some. Wow, wow. Yes, that's why we we're able to because it's the same spirit, the same message, the same understanding, the same revelation. That's because why we. What, what they tell me is that Nigerians are too selfish. Everybody wants to take. What do we do? Use their own salary. It's got to a point. Own salary too. We, sell, we, we, we sell our personal belongings. Charles, Charles yes. is yes. We have to sell yes. our phones. At times when we want to do some charity work and then we are unable to get money, we just take anything we need that we have. Our phones, you know, we just sell it just for us to raise some capital uh, at, at that time. So um, all this is our self-funding. Yeah, self self -funding. And the dedication, actually, look at Charles. Charles, Charles, DSA, Charles is one of the most dedicated uh, uh, colleague and member that we could have had in this organization. See, because all of these guys, they were young guys in the university. Okay. These were uh, uh, people who still had the responsibility for their education. And I had to encourage them that we you have to start a business you have to do a business. i mean i remember how many nights we'll have mentorship on the business <laughs> mm -hmm. you know they will call me up in, and i was saying okay let's talk 1 a.m and i wake up 1 a.m i'll be teaching him because i was running business also in lagos and i'll be telling him how i was making progress how i was getting things done and how they could expand the business and they were using the proceed of the business to empower people to 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 run the ngo and create impact so uh, those pastors saying those things, me, I've had, I've had it also, and all of that is because, you know, when the entire aim of the church is about running the church, running expensive buildings, expensive decoration, expensive lighting, and all of that building branches. So um, rather than telling the people to use their resources to do what uh, it is that we're showing you, it's about the people bringing their resources to support what the church is doing. So it becomes difficult. You cannot tell somebody, to do something by the right, and then you are telling him to do again something by the left. So it's either the people are bringing the resources to the church, or they are taking the resources to build the meat to impact the, their calling, their ministry. How that outside the church place, like yes, we show you right away. Yes, I want to say something uh, to that as well. You know, at that time, at this level, we our heist has already opened. We are no longer sowing seed to any church. So the yeah. money we are bringing from, we are not, we are not paying tight. Okay, okay, can give it to us. <laughs> We are no longer sowing seeds anywhere. So the money we are making from the business, it was so much easier for us to, you know, focus those that money, that resources on the NGO at that time. So uh, that's just it. Uh, please, you can move to the next slide. 
Okay, so. Yes, yeah, this is still uh, some of the campaigns too. Uh, this was aired in, uh, if I can still remember now, I think I think it should be. Yes, Akumba, yes. This is Akumba. Akumba Koko. Yes, that we had this uh, meet your mentor. So what we did there basically was we, we we break down because we have a team of I think six members at this time. So we set, we break down the this because they are, they were too much. So we have to separate them session by session, right? Group by group, and then we put each leaders for each of those groups to mentor them, to talk to them, to expo I mean to expose them to how they can live uh, an upright life beyond. Uh, the distractions they are having in terms of all this premarital sex and uh, and all. So that was what we did here uh, at that time. Beautiful. Okay. This can move to the next slide. Okay. Uh, this is the last slide. Okay, that's the last slide, right? Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah, so um, we, as my brother said, we have a lot of uh, things to share, a lot of uh, pictures and videos and all. But uh, we did we give scholarship to students as well. In uh, we did that in uh, Etioro Akoko. Uh, but the picture you know, do those pictures for the yeah, scholarship. For the scholarship. Because can you talk about the scholarship? What we exactly did in the scholarship? Yes, what we did was that we pick. Uh, we did we first did one in the Kitsi, uh where we pick uh, six. Uh, students, right? And then we pay for their school fees. Yes, we we, we pay for their school, school fees. Are you talking of secondary school students? Or... Yeah, secondary school, secondary school students. Secondary school. But do they pay secondary school? Do they pay school fees in secondary school? Yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah. even primary yes, school, yeah. you pay. Primary school, they pay. They pay. Nothing is free here <laughs> like that. <laughs> but there is something they call universal education. Uh, that's 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 just name. It's not it's not local. It's not functional. What they because, do, what universal basic education, what they do is they just renovate the school building. They paint it and provide chairs and all of that. That's all. Charles mom, he, uh, she's currently a head mistress. So, um, we, we through our we basically know much about some of these schools' expenses and all like that. So we use that leverage, uh, to be able to. And they train to primary schools and pick some students in secondary schools as well. So we give we pay their school fee, uh, and then we give them um, writing materials as well. So we replicated that too in um, Etioro. So where we went for a program, uh, School of Self Discovery. So at that point, uh, we we speak with the because what we usually do is that most of the time the people that are easily accessible to us to are all these um, church leaders in those local areas. So we go one of the biggest church there that has the largest, we we'll go and meet them and tell them that we need, can they provide people? Because it's a strange land to us. We don't know who is who and people that really need this help. So they will suggest to us and we'll do our findings and they make some one or two research about those uh, students they recommended to, um, for us. And they will go ahead and then we fund, we pay for, for their school fee. We give them scholarship, give them writing materials as well. So that was how we run the scholarship program. And all these things are done by us, you know, through our self funding. The members we tax ourselves. You have to contribute a certain amount of money. I will have to contribute. So we put those resources together and then to fund the scholarships uh, program. Beautiful. Yes. Yes. So, uh, DSA, this is, uh, we decided to show this um, and share this with you. Like I said, we put a lot of the pictures and videos in a Google Drive, and then you could see have access to with the play, uh, a lot of campaigns we've done in the past and all of that to let you know that uh you and this video also you help, help me edit it and send it to me yes okay. yes yes we will we'll edit yeah. it and then uh send we'll it to... yeah okay okay so, so uh we're going to show all of this to let you know that uh uh you actually have created impact all of what we've said now happened because you were bold enough, you spoke out in Nigeria. So um, I like when you want, when Stephen told me that he messaged you and he you responded and all of that, that I mean, I, I told him we can remember, I'd said that one day we're gonna meet Sunday Adelaja. I told him in the past, I mean, something I always know that uh, one way or the other, I'd said by the time I move out of the Nigeria this year, some of the places, places I was going to visit would be to find a way to meet Sunday Adelaja one day. Yes, uh, I would had that discussion in the past that 
It definitely. So when he told me, I wasn't surprised. Yeah, usually I know you were gonna respond because uh, at imbibe your spirits. I know that you are a different breed. There's no Nigerian pastor that you can message on Facebook and they respond to you in, in two weeks after, after he's having a meeting with you. Like, the biggest uh, pastor in the entire Europe. Not just in three weeks you have access to him. I mean, that's that's like a that's like a dream that is impossible. And you know, this is some of the things we also like. I remember when I. I remember a friend, let me share this with uh, Dr. Sunday. I remember a friend when I was in university, he also started a church like me. And by that time, when I started my own church, uh, before I left school, I, when I left, moved from Christ, I had already started having different orientation, like I said. And this friend only had five members at that five, time. Five. five members in his church at that time. And I already had over close to 60 or 70. And he invited me to become a minister. I mean, we were just boys of 22, 23 years old at that time. He invited me to come a minister. And when I got there, I only saw two people were two people were in the church, in the uh, in the classroom. One person was leading prayer, and that person was the congregation. And then the three remaining people were the protocol guiding my friend. <laughs> so, so when it was time for him to minister, this is the true life story. Do you want to know about it? When it was time to minister, he came out. There was somebody else carrying his Bible. There was another protocol. Somebody else who, uh, moving ahead of him and was coming. And he now went and sat and went to the altar. And after the after the, the entire day, and the minister, and we finished, and I told him his name was Ben. I said, Ben, you only have five. Me that I have 60 members. No, no, no. Once service start, I sit with the people in front. We sit together and we worship together. We do everything together. I don't usually go and hide somewhere, and then have take out of five members, take three out, two out of them to come and be sitting with me. And I will skip prayer, skip worship, skip everything. It's when I want to minister, you will now come forward. And I realized that it is because. I had known it is because of what we saw with the senior pastors that were following. This was the way the usual call the names in Nigeria. This is it. This is in my my background in Christ, but that's the way it was done. As a pastor, you don't come until it's time to minister. And once you minister, you go and leave. I mean, and I saw when I was watching um, uh, God's Embassy in Ukraine, a lot of your videos on YouTube and all of that. I see you sitting in the front row. I see you dance with the people, shout with the people, and all of it. So, no separate yeah. share. You know, separate share. No, I mean, the no golden, golden big share. The husband and the wife sitting in on the altar in the front, and all of that. So, it's, 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 it's. I'm sharing this to let you know the kind of impact you had, and the only way we could actually show you that you actually had an impact was the result of this NGO. The practicality, just in our own little way. We decided to do exactly what you did in Ukraine. And we're still doing it because the NGO is still alive. We still have some of these programs ongoing. Um, the Kids Coding Club is still ongoing. Uh, I know in December, Christmas time, when Juwan was in uh, the state, he still had meeting with the leaders of the a NGO and all of that. And for us, we decided to share this to uh, let you see that uh, when you came out and started criticizing pastors and started sharing light, in Nigeria and all of that, the impact um, is there, okay? The criticism and all of that is just a normal reaction and it's bound to be. But don't ever feel, uh, don't ever feel like you've done nothing. Don't ever feel like you're alone. You're not alone. I mean, we're talking to you right here, the fact that you're not alone and the seed you've sown, uh, a lot of them went to the good soil and it's bringing in uh, uh, results, it's bringing in fruits. And for us, we are eternally changed. Um, we are not, we're not the same as we used to. And this is the result. And we'll, let, we'll leave the floor for you to talk. If there are, um, we'll need ideas from you. We'll need encouragement from you. And uh, we'll need, uh, if there's anything you want to let the girls know, uh, but we want to also let you know that if you have a foot soldier here in Africa, here in Nigeria, you we. Uh, our rotation has changed in terms of uh, we're not trying to build our own auditorium, build our own empire or anything like that. Um, it's all about impacting people. 
the love of God in our heart has to be physically felt. One of the one of the projects we have for the NGO in the coming year is how we want to do a campaign that will uh, uh, politically influence the mind of people. Okay, um, we want to call it uh, uh, values, values and principles of the kingdom to impact politics. Okay, it's something I've been breathing on. And one of the campaign to let people know that the way you choose your leaders, uh, their character and their attitude, um, you cannot move away from the results you get. Okay, because generally in this part of the world in Nigeria, we, uh, we believe that it's prayer that will change things, prayer that will change the mind of our leaders, it's prayer that will make the uh, leaders, and that's what all our pastors are doing for the political arena. Nobody's speaking out, nobody's talking, nobody's doing something laying by example. And we will also still continue all the other things we've shown you. I know uh, for Juwon, he has a very great passion for young people, for primary school, secondary school, and um, that's a big back part of the focus of the NGO. So we're going to be doing more of that later this year. Uh, so we would like to hear from you. Uh, we want, if you have any advice for us, I mean, uh, we, we are open. Charles want, wanted to say something about the NGO when he was introducing himself. So we said later, maybe he should say, I'm supposed Charles. to leave by two o'clock, but so we still have 20 minutes. Okay, sir. Charles, go ahead. Commit yourself. I say, John, I've already summarized the whole thing. You know, that's just the summary of who we are, what you've done in the past. And uh, John, I've summarized it. There's not much to say again over it. Okay. So now I will, ask, I will ask a question. So these programs, these outreaches that you do, is are they just one-off programs or there is a system? Um, what we do is um, we... I can say it's one of, and then what we now later do is that we can now have after the program, we cannot have like um one-on-one -on -one session with any student that wants to meet with us or they still want to continue. Because the, the challenge we have is that um we are we we are limited in resources, number one. So it's not something that and then those schools to get their attention, it's a bit challenging too. You know, they can only why, give you why is it challenging? Yes, the number one thing is just number one. The number one challenge we had when we started this NGO was religion. Now, uh, let me give you an instance. Let's say, for example, we want to organize a kind of uh, program for young people. And then we only know that the only way you can really reach out to young people is when you go to all these uh, religious centered churches and all like that. So, what, <laughs> yes, so they would think that we are coming to hijack their members or they are, they are thinking that we are under church coming to pick from, from their members. And, you know, those are the challenges, number one. And then coming to, down to the schools, you know, um, schools, they have, you know, the, the school principal to, and they're mostly religious people, pastor, um, church, one or two church members. So it's a big, a big issues for us to say, okay, we're well, coming to uh, teach them, to expose their students to something that can impact their life. So they sit as if, um, you know, we are just coming to take away their, their student and all like that. So the, that's the challenge. So it's just one of the things that we do. And then we find at times we go back to that same school, uh, maybe within two, three months interval to go and um, do the same thing that we've done there before. Okay, so I want to say something to that. DSA, you know, just like what Stephen has said, um, you know, this is all in now as this is us instead of waiting until we become financially strong or mentally strong to do something. This is all doing something as we're growing, as we're moving, as knowledge we're increasing. We're doing it as the best way we could to create impact. And that was why the one-off system was easier. Because at some point, all the members also were scattered in different locations and all of that. And we were doing all, all of this um, one-off, one-off, and then we monitor. Now, for us, um, the system that has been consistent is that we said the NGO has to keep functioning. At part time, we're having campaigns ongoing, campaigns ongoing, campaigns ongoing. For instance, for the Kids Coding Club, the Skill Coding Club in Lagos is already a system. Yeah. So every first Saturday of the month and every last Saturday of the month, that's when we teach, we impact the students. Okay. And this student, I remember the last class I had with these students. Uh, before the class, I had to teach them about values, teach them about just, teach them about. Um, why are you? Why are we going to be teaching you to create games? 
okay? We are teaching you to create games so that you can increase the intellectual property of the environment around you, okay? So it, it's, 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 the Kids Coding Club already have a system. In fact, currently, uh, because I'm into tech and I run uh, 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 a lot of things here in Lagos, um, and I've, I'm a certified uh, Facebook uh, mentor for Facebook platform, I started talking to Facebook, and even I have planned to talk to Google and Microsoft this year to see if they can, uh, because they have a lot of all of this fund for programs like that, and see how uh, we can get funds from them to be able to create more impact that we're looking uh, towards. So um, the next stage for this NGO is also to create a consistent system for this. And I talked with my younger ones, and I've said that no matter how we look at it, we we'll also soon create an umbrella of a ministry where the NGO will function from to have a consistent approach, okay, to this in terms of not ministry, not like church ministry or anything like that, but more like uh, an outreach structured um, outfits that we can now begin to have more members, more partners, okay, so that it's not going to be about us. And what we will do in that center is to make sure that it's not the NGO that they are coming to work for. We also inspire them to now begin to create other NGOs from under this, that will offshoot from this ministry. So you are a lawyer, you have passion to create justice in the society, start your own NGO and gather people together and do something about justice. Like that, like that, in different sectors. In the, and that's the next, this, this is the next phase of what we are looking at. But we, I know, personally, I, I'm a business person. I know how demanding and how cost uh, it, uh, it can be to create something bigger, something larger. So um, this is this is for, for, for now. This is how we are able uh, to function. Beautiful. Now, um, a few things I would like to say. Number one, 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 when you work on this video, I would like you to remove the names. You know, there was a point where I mentioned the names of two pastors who are you know, uh, okay, yes, yeah. yes, yes. I will yes. Yes. remove yes. their names and anything you want to remove, you remove. Why? Because I want to take this video and put it out to my disciples, maybe on Facebook or somewhere, for them to see that they, I don't need to be in Nigeria, I don't need to come to Nigeria for the work and the impact to begin to work. There are a few people who are doing similar things, but I'm so encouraged by you guys that uh, you know that from school from even university days and uh, it's good that we didn't even put the we have not we didn't record your individual testimonies but the what the what we have recorded is the work of your uh NGO. so i would like to put it out there if you don't mind if i have your permission no problem sir <laughs> no problem okay. you have our permission okay so if i have your permission then there are two other things i would like to encourage you to do i'm sure are you people familiar with my hmt April 2019 system building. Yes, 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 yes. yes, yes. HMT. Yes, yes. Okay. Yes. So uh, that HM, that HMT, I would like to encourage you to organize uh, for yourselves, for your team members, and for your uh, foundation member to organize a training or a you know a kind of a training, a program for you all to go through yeah through that material. And exploit, exploit it completely, and so that from going from that, then you will be able to create functionable systems for everything you do and for every value you hold. Just like Damilola was saying now. So, if we believe in the value of justice, everybody who believes in that value of justice will have an umbrella, like a platform, our NGO, an organization from which or and through which. He is going to identify all the issues of injustice in Nigeria and pursue those, those issues through that platform, just like you are using this platform now to do what you are doing. So if anybody believes in anti-corruption, that, that okay, has passion for something that is that we have to, so we have to teach them to build a system to tackle corruption, you know, throughout wherever God put them to, in, in the city or the country or the state. So the same thing, like now, what uh, Juwan is doing, uh, that he has passion for secondary school and primary schools. 
So he says, we have to build a system that even if it is one primary school or one secondary school that we target, it will have to be a thorough work in such a way that, okay, that if it is, you, what you want to give them is, for example, the value of uh, getting a, getting skills or coding or being uh, tech up, uh, 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 yeah, literate. So those things, you know that that whole school is completely, you know, infiltrated and completely bought into it. I mean, that everybody that's going to graduate from that school <laughs> is, is moving in the right direction. So the same thing with the coding. So if we are going to do something, anything that is worth doing at all is worth doing. Well. Okay, exactly. Even if we're going to do it for one person. And that's why I want you to, to please follow that system uh, training and go through it. So another thing I would like to say is, uh, I don't know if you are aware or familiar with a playlist on my uh, YouTube page. The playlist is it's not a it's training, it's not HMT, but it's a special playlist that I created from a program that I was doing. It's called How to Change a Nation. Look for it. Okay. Yeah, How to Change a Nation. So you just put Sunday Delaja How to Change a Nation. Well, how to change the nation by Sunday the Okay, sir. Mm -hmm. It's not popular, but there is nothing more powerful than it in the internet. Not just mm -hmm. on uh, Sunday the Larger page, but in the whole of internet in this world. I mean, YouTube, there is nothing more powerful than that playlist. And nobody knows about it. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. There are 136 videos that place. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I've not seen that picture. <laughs> wow. hmm. And the name is exactly what it means, how to change a nation. It will just empower you people. Bata, bata. You will just see it. Every, you will just see the way system works. And for one person, how you can just take domination, come totally subdue. And if this is the state you want to, or a country you want to, or a, a city you want to, it, it, that's what the secret of that, what is there. But it's, it, and it's with practical, you know me, it's always practical. Mm -hmm. uh, this was not five years ago. <laughs> huh? this, this was recorded five years ago. Yes, you know, <laughs> you already know about it. Yes, I've seen it on YouTube. <laughs> 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 you you see, you can tell that Davilola is tech savvy. Is yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. wow. So wow. that also could be used by you guys to like, equip your people and to, to become revolutionary, revolutionary uh, generation and individual that are thinking on a level that people will say human beings cannot think like people are thinking. Mm. They will just say, where are you coming from? Human beings don't think like this. So mm -hmm. even those two systems I just mentioned. Mm -hmm. uh, and also, maybe another one that could help your team is, um, mm, I think I called it, it's HMT. I, I think I called it, um, let me see what I call it. I think it's planning your life for 25 years. Mm. HMT. Yes, how to plan your life for 25 years. There are 17 videos in that HMT. So that you people will have 25 years, 20 years, 30 years, 50 years plan. Even if it's not concrete plan, but at least envisage. You will be able to orient, yeah, orientate yourself and have the orientation for the next 50 years of your life. And what will happen, it doesn't matter where you will live. Just like me now, I had my own plan 25 years as well, and now a war started. And somebody yeah. will think that should affect my my plan or anything. No, it will only be uh, temporary discomfort. Yeah, But it doesn't change anything because plan is superior. Mm -hmm. You will stick to get to the target. So, um, those three things 
are some of the most powerful things anybody could find on the internet. Of course, you know conversion. Conversion. Yeah. So that's, 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 that was out of the, outside status of Duke Kingdom, conversion was the next level of uh, uh, impact. I mean, all your messages are very impactful, but the one that created landmark for me was Faith to Subdue Kingdom. I don't know what is it about that message. That message about one hour, 15 minutes. I don't know what is it about that. That I mean, you, I mean, <laughs> I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe you two need to listen to that message again and actually <laughs> find out what happened with you when you that message. <laughs> so, because it's it's it was echo from another world entirely. It was, it was it but was, that that message that faith to subdue kingdom was the short version. Later on, uh, that was about maybe twenty years ago. I picked that message. Wow! But wow. it was later on expanded mm. and broken down to make it slick simpler. Because that one, even though it was as powerful as you say it is, it was this spiritual. Mm. Yeah. So I had to break it down to even be much more practical how you use it. Yeah. So mm. and that is what where why I now did from that one I now broke it down into faith series. Yes, mm. I've listened to all the faith series. Ah, I have. Ah, I know. I have. It is still yes. expanding on yes. faith of new kingdom. Of new kingdom. Yes, I listened to all the faith series. I've listened yeah. to all because faith of new kingdom made me search for all your messages about faith. Ah. <laughs> because the Pentecostal and charismatic foundation is faith. It's everything, Kenetaking, Kenekopla, everything I was ever ever exposed to in, in Pentecostal and charismatic growing up was about faith. Faith. And even Assemblies of God that my dad attended before I was born was about faith, faith, faith. So when I came in contact with your message on faith of the kingdom, I had to go look for everything that you preach to that time and after about faith, faith. And I have listened to the faith series. I mean. It's 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 revolutionary. It's revolutionary, and that's what's given birth to where we are today, talking with you and all of the lovely people, uh, younger ones that are here, and even everyone around me that are up stay. Uh, they say your messages have helped us to pull people away from what you'll be criticizing. I can I can't count the number of friends that no longer go to ch regular church. Yes, they no longer listen to me, and even when they listen now, they know what to pick and what to throw away. So, uh, are, I mean, when the time comes, if you permit, we can. I can introduce some of those friends too. I mean, plenty of them that are now people who are beginning to understand this and are taking steps also to create the kind of impact. What I will, what I will suggest we do is, well, once you people go through, finish going through these other okay. ones I gave you now, yeah, and God will give you the wisdom and the leading to know what to do. How yes, you? Zoom training for your people, or how you will use all those materials. Mm -hmm. So after you finish doing them, it will be good to see the conclusion of the whole thing. Yeah, with whole team. So mm -hmm. once you and the, the new uh, insight and enla mm -hmm. enlargement that direction. Have, direction and the real concrete steps you have mm -hmm. now taken, or you are going to take, or how you are moving forward thanks to yeah. this new. Yes. So once yeah, that. Yes, once that is done, either it's going to be in one year's time or six months' time or three months' time, even if it's tomorrow, just write me. Then I will, you, then you can now come together with all those people that have been prepared, that you know that, yes, these people are now different individuals. Even if it's going to be 100 people, mm -hmm. then we can meet like this and then we'll go to another level. Then, just because I have to go now, otherwise, I wanted to share with you my next vision. But when we do that one, this is our next meeting mm -hmm. we will, with your larger team and mm -hmm. with your other concepts. I would also like to hear people's concepts and ideas and what everybody wants to do and what are the other vision uh, for their lives for the next 20, 25 years or 50 years. So once you people come prepared like that, then I will also share with you my what I'm going to do in the, the next stage of my life and what mm -hmm. I'm about to do, I will reveal it to you people in private and share with mm -hmm. you my plan. In, no matter where you are, even if you are all, all over the world, you will see what I am doing and where this whole thing synergizes together with what you mm -hmm. God is really able to do. Wow, wow. We're so, so grateful. DSA, 
Uh, we want to release you. Thank you. I mean, two hours with DSA, just <laughs> less than three weeks. It's 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 amazing. Um, uh, all of us we really appreciate you, and uh, we thank thank you for this relationship because uh, this is a relationship, and we know that uh, it's gonna blossom. Uh, lastly, I want to say, please be encouraged. Uh, do not. Uh, when I listen to your voice, know that you sent to Stevie. Ah, I told him I said, ah, I feel the pain in the heart of DSA. Uh, don't, 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 you, you are creating impact. I mean, this is, this should be an encouragement to you. And uh, whatever it is that you want to do, if we fit in, we are 100% available wherever we are in this world. And uh, thank you for your impact. Thank you. I mean, if the, if the law calls you home today, you're already a success. You planted yes, roots that we will carry further and we're carrying further and implants in other people. Thank you so much. We are very grateful, sir. We will send you the video. You, I did send you the video. Thank you, sir, and sir. Then send you some other things that we have. We will listen to all of this. If as a matter of fact, we're talking what came to my screen. I'm creating, I'm going to create a telegram group today and begin. And before the next time we move, before the next time we meet, I will have create grow that telegram group to over 1,000, 2,000 of people where we will be sending your message to them to listen yeah. and have periodic time to analyze the impact of these messages in their life. This is the first step we will take from today. Yeah, and if you, even if, when you are ready, when we'll be meeting, even if it is going to be with all of them, I will yeah. be ready to meet, to meet with everybody. And But there have to be people like you, people who are genuinely yeah. Definitely, definitely. Mind. Definitely, definitely, yeah. definitely, definitely. Thank you so much. Uh, AY. When I come to Nigeria, which is going to be my next step that I want to talk to you people about. Mm -hmm. It is on this, on people like you, that we are going to base mm -hmm. the next thing that I will share with you next time we meet. So those people have to be genuine. Yeah. And the only people mm -hmm. to believe that you that they are genuine is for them to be like you. <laughs> exactly. So, <laughs> so we are not going to be looking for the crowd, for the kind of, you know, and this meeting, that's why I brought, we brought just few of us. They're larger because we understand everybody is in different places in terms of their inner development and exposure to who you are. So even at the end of the day, by the time we'll be having the larger the meeting, uh, we may not bring everybody the line. It may just be 50, 40 people that we know have been by because Jesus only left 12 people and 12 people created impact. Okay. So uh, thank you so much, sir. Please, everyone, say hello to DSA. Thank you so much, sir. We're grateful. Thank you, sir. Well, I guess uh, we'll uh, pass the bus, eh? Yeah, no, pass the bus. Please send our regards from all the way from Nigeria. Please share one prayer with us. Uh, Father, in the name of Jesus. Amen. You said if a seed that falls on the ground does not die, it will not bring forth fruits. Your word that has been sown in Nigeria, <laughs> over the internet, Facebook, everywhere, has fallen to the ground. It has died. It has germinated life. And I'm seeing the life before my eyes right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that this life that you have given birth to, that you will cause them not just to germinate, you will cause them to, to, to explode in growth and mm -hmm. increase. You said we should be fruitful, multiply, and subdue the earth. The goal is submission. That we will subdue the earth with your values. We subdue the earth with your righteousness. We subdue the earth with your nature, with your likeness, with your image. That seed is being sown into this man and lady and into more. Now, Father, I ask that the grace the power, the insight, the revelation that you have given me, the mantle to be able to carry this to a foreign land, a foreign continent, a strange people, and still be effective, and still be able to change the nation totally, turn it all around the continent. That grace now is being impacted and released upon and through each one of these people, I release it with all my heart. Amen. With the fullness of my soul, I share with them that grace. Each one of them individually empower them the way you have empowered me. Amen. With insight, with wisdom, with Amen. grace to Amen. endlessly be Amen. fruitful beyond imagination. 
Amen. And to be able to subdue the earth, not just of Nigeria, Amen. but of nations, both Amen. on the African continent and beyond. Amen. And even do more than I have done. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, sir. We're grateful. Uh, we will keep the communication the way it is. If we need to reach you, uh, Stephen will always reach you on our behalf. Uh, we are grateful. Thank you so much, sir. <laughs> it is well. Take care Thank of yourself. You, sir. Right. Thank you, sir. Bye.